Robert Karen, Becoming Attached, First Relationships and How They Shape Our Capacity to Love. Embark on a journey of understanding the significance of attachment in our lives, as Becoming Attached by Robert Karen delves into the intricate nature of first relationships and their impact on our capacity to love. Through exploring the complex processes of attachment and their various phases, the book discusses the importance of a primary caregiver and the need for warmth and security. With elements of child psychology, parenting styles, and attachment theories, this summary will unfold controversial and fascinating aspects of attachment and its role in shaping our personalities. The Intricacy of Attachment Our early childhood recollections might be limited, but we never forget our primary caregiver, often our mother. This fundamental bond, known as attachment, is a vital part of our initial development and a critical requirement for survival. Within the first year, developing infants recognize their caregiver's face, and any separation can cause them anxiety. Animal studies with monkeys reinforce the importance of warmth, love, and attachment over basic needs like food. While attachment is universally experienced, its study incites heated debates and conflicting theories, some of which try to direct parenting styles. The following sections will explore diverse perspectives on attachment. Exploring Secure Bases From childhood, our attachment to our primary caregiver, usually our mother, provides a secure base for us. This base allows us to feel safe, explore the world around us, and understand our environment. As babies, we tend to stay near our mother and seek her when we are scared. This is demonstrated in experiments with baby monkeys, who rely on their wire mother to feel comfortable and explore their surroundings. Similarly, human toddlers depend on their mothers for a secure base. Children might test the limits of this base by wandering away in crowded places or seeking negative attention, as they are curious about how far they can go before their mothers step in to protect them. The Impact of Parental Separation Just a few decades ago, hospitals routinely separated sick children from their parents due to concerns about infection. This practice had unexpected, negative consequences on children's development and mental well-being. James Robertson, a leading researcher on the effects of mother-child separation, fought to change hospital policy and allow parents to visit their children. Through emotional film studies, he demonstrated the distress and lasting impact such separations had on young patients. Fortunately, hospitals eventually recognized the importance of familial bonds and began to permit unlimited parental visitation. In the not-so-distant past, hospitals would separate children from their parents over fears of infection. This practice unfortunately caused unintended harm to young patients, affecting their emotional and psychological development. Expert James Robertson observed the detrimental impact of mother-child separation and campaigned for hospitals to reconsider their policies, advocating for the importance of parental presence in a child's life. Robertson's influential work included the release of powerful film reels that captured the suffering of real children in hospitals due to forced separations. One such study followed a two-year-old girl who, in just eight days, transformed from a cheerful child to a resentful, listless individual. Her parents were only permitted to visit her for 45 minutes every other day, hardly enough to maintain their connection and ease her distress. The little girl's heart-wrenching cries illustrate the profound implications of tearing young children away from their caregivers. What makes separation so distressing for children is that they cannot comprehend the temporary nature of such situations. To them, even a brief separation feels like a permanent loss. Prolonged separation can lead to more severe consequences, including rejection of their parents or even refusal to eat. Thankfully, Hospitals began to acknowledge the significance of Robertson's research and the emotional needs of children. Visitation policies gradually changed, granting parents unlimited access to their hospitalized children. This crucial shift recognizes the vital role that parental love and support play in a child's well-being, even within a medical setting. Unraveling Attachment Styles Mary Ainsworth, a key figure in child psychology, 
outline three primary attachment styles that define the connection between parent and child. The secure attachment, most prevalent, involves a nurturing, attentive mother and a contented, easy-to-please child. Ambivalent attachment, in contrast, is marked by an anxious, needy child and an unpredictable, sometimes emotionally distant mother. Finally, the avoidant attachment style consists of limited interaction between mother and child, promoting excessive independence and emotional distance. Interestingly, these attachment styles often persist into adulthood, revealing their lasting influence on a person's relationships throughout their life. Decoding Attachment Styles The Strange Situation, a study conducted by Mary Ainsworth, is a key tool in understanding attachment styles of individuals, both children and adults. In a laboratory playroom, children were left alone with a stranger, and their reactions to this situation, as well as reactions to their mothers returning, helped determine their attachment styles. Securely attached children would calm down easily upon their mother's return, ambivalently attached children appeared distressed and angry, while avoidantly attached children would ignore their mothers. To assess adults' attachment styles, the Berkeley Adult Attachment Interview asks about their childhood experiences, family dynamics, and relationships with parents. These insights are crucial for understanding the potential parental behavior of these adults, as attachment styles are often passed on from one generation to the next. Shaping Parent-Child Attachment Attachment styles within parent-child relationships can be attributed to how parents have been nurtured themselves. A study utilizing the adult attachment interview showcased a 75% accuracy in predicting the attachment style between mothers and their children. Consequently, improving parenting through education and counseling can have a lasting impact on these relationships. Such interventions, as seen in a case with low-income families, significantly increased secure attachment rates between mothers and their children. Ultimately, having the right resources and support can foster healthier parent-child bonds. Debunking Day Care Myths The debate around day care and its effects on children has been fueled by historical and social factors. Initially, opposition to day care stemmed from the resistance to the women's movement and their right to work. Critics cited studies that linked day care to anxiety and aggression in children, arguing that a single attachment figure, the mother, was sufficient. However, advocates of day care have countered these concerns by emphasizing the importance of high-quality care centers. They argue that any difficulties faced by children in day care are not due to the facility itself, but rather the home environment created by busy parents. When proper caregiver-child relationships are established, day care proves to be a safe and beneficial option for even the youngest of children. Unraveling the Parenting Paradox before diving into parenthood, it's essential to reflect on your own childhood experiences and emotions. People often unconsciously mimic their parents' behaviors, even if they vowed never to do so. Understanding the reasons behind your dissatisfaction with your upbringing can help you avoid making the same mistakes your parents did. Self-awareness is crucial in teaching your children to navigate the world and understand their own emotions. To be effective parents, you must first understand yourself and your emotional journey. As you embark on the journey of parenthood, remember that your own childhood experiences and emotions play a vital role in shaping your parenting style. It's not uncommon for people to unintentionally mirror their parents' behaviors, even if they once resented those same actions. To break free from this cycle, it's crucial to recognize and understand the reasons behind your dissatisfaction with your upbringing. During a research study, one expectant mother revealed that she had plans to control her baby but was unaware of her emotional struggle concerning control from her own mother. This highlights how easy it is for parents to unconsciously make the same mistakes as their own parents. When parents are not in tune with their own emotions and childhood experiences, they may struggle to provide the guidance their children need. Part of raising a child is teaching them the emotional tools necessary for navigating the world. Therefore, it is essential for parents to develop self-awareness and emotional understanding to foster a healthier environment for their children's emotional growth.
As we delve into the world of attachment and uncover the profound impact it has on our lives, it becomes evident that the primary relationships formed during early years play a significant role in molding our capacity to love. The book enlightens us on the different attachment styles, the importance of understanding past experiences and our own emotions in order to be effective parents, and the impact of factors such as genetics, parenting style, and external factors like daycare. Essentially, the nurturing and secure environment created by a primary caregiver not only functions as an anchor throughout childhood, but also shapes the way we perceive and approach love and relationships in adulthood.